<laughs> Alright, so today we are brewing London Porter and we're going to do it in two different beer systems. We've got, what do you call this beer system here? Homemade. Road, <laughs> roadshow homemade. <laughs> homemade, yeah. The homemade beer system. <laughs> okay. Um, with gas and doing it outside and then we're going to compare that to the all-electric brew easy system which we've got uh, inside in the basement. See how it goes. <laughs> We are heating the sparge water that we will use to rinse over the grain bed and wash the sugars off the grain. And so after this gets to about 170 degrees, we will put it in that smaller uh, orange hot liquor tank. And then we have a gravity feed mechanism that will take water out of that, spray it over the grains in the mash tun, and then uh, it'll come out of the mash tun into the boil kettle, uh, and then we'll boil that. For the Brew Easy system, we have all of the grains in the top kettle and half of the water. The other half of the water is in the kettle beneath with a heating element, and the temperature is controlled by the Tower of Power system, where we set the temperature and that cycles on and off the heating element to keep the mash temperature where we want it. When the mash is finished, we drain everything to the bottom kettle, and then that's where we boil. We're adding a third brew awesome. to this. We're doing a brewer's best, what is it? Scottish ale. Yeah. 0.3% alcohol, my volume. <laughs> so if this turns out to be the best London Porter, we're going to be a bit disappointed. <laughs> so what's going in? Uh, three ounces of Fuggle Pops. What's going on is our um, Aroma Hops 15 minutes of Fuggles. Fuggles. Here's ours. Fuggles coral, or it's just fun to say. Alright, Fuggle. And the rest of the Fuggle. Fuggle go. So it's cooling time. We are using the Blickman Thermonator with the Brew Easy. Uh, first of all, just recirculating on itself because our Tap water is not cold enough to get this down. Um, our tap water is about 80 degrees. So we're recirculating first, and then we will use a bucket of ice to send some cold water through the plate chiller as well. So that's what we're doing for the Blickman setup. What do you use the power? Who use that? Ooh, look at this. And this Ow. is the other setup using a immersion chiller. We are down to 80, 84 degrees, uh, 87 degrees maybe. 87. 87. Wow. This is an uninsulting. Good. We're siphoning in the fermenter, and we have this inline filter that we we just got, and uh, the siphon got really slow, so we drained it out. It's actually, it's not that much in the middle, but anyways, let me. You did your gravity reading? Yes, we did. And you got? 10.55-ish. Right on the money. The Blickman one, we're taking the gravity reading and we've got to 1.056 as our original gravity, which is exactly what we wanted. It's gonna aerate. So All right, let's see. Whip up the... Okay, we'll try this on our carboys. If 
Right, so we took the stopper off because the stopper was uh, shedding plastic or rubber into our uh, beer. So this seems to be better and we're letting oxygen in this way too. This is our yeast. After it's gone through a starter, it is quite chunky. We're not really sure why. Never seen chunky yeast before. But it's a different strain of yeast than we've ever used. And we will swirl it and pitch it. So it's been a month now since brew day. I've got the guys coming over. Let's do a taste test and see how the Blickman and homemade system beers have ended up tasting. This one, the OG was 1057. The final gravity was supposed to be 1017, but it stalled and it got to 1032. So it's a 3% beer. For a 3% beer, it's Actually, pretty good, isn't it? it? Doesn't taste light to me. No. no. So this is the Blickman one. This also came a little bit light. We think about 1.021, so 4.3 percent. It seems slightly less malty than than the one that didn't ferment. So. <laughs> Now is the moment when we are going to compare the beer. We've got a blind taste <clears throat> test. Only Brian knows the uh, which is which, but we have two beers here. One is the homemade system and one is the Blickman system. And we're going to see if we can identify which is which. What do you got? That was you. That was us. Yeah. Same as me. Yeah. See, I think it's the other way around. Good, we need one person to do wrong. <laughs> and there might be three of us. Blickman right? and Where are you? That. I think this is us. And that's the Blickman. Mine was the right one. <laughs> yes! Oh. <laughs> that's, <laughs> really, that's hilarious. We all said we could taste it, how different they were. Oh, I can taste a different one, I just can't remember which was which. This one's out of your tap, I think it's also drier. So green is out of the tap. Oh, green out of your tap. How confident? <laughs> Wait, what, what, is it, is it, that's my final answer. <laughs> and that is incorrect. Incorrect? Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right out of tap. So four out of five of us. <laughs> so what can we conclude with this of the homemade system versus the Blickman system? Well, the biggest difference uh, turned out to be in the fermentation, which has probably nothing to do with the systems at all. The homemade system came in at about 3%, uh, but the target was 5%, and the Blickman system came in at about 4%, and we're not really sure what the problem was. But we thought the beers did taste pretty different. That was until we did a blind taste test, and actually, most of us got it wrong. We couldn't figure out which was the Blickman and which was the homemade. But overall, I guess we should conclude this. We brewed the same beer with two different systems, the results were slightly different, probably mainly through fermentation. But in the end, both beers were pretty drinkable. We like them both, and in the end, it's really all that matters. <laughs>